Hi everybody, it's Honest John again. Now, there's no denying that Russia has legitimate interests in the Ukraine, and especially Crimea. Crimea was a part of Russia until the 1950s when uh, Khrushchev gave Crimea to the Ukraine. Of course, since Ukraine was part of the Soviet Union back then, it was basically like giving it to himself. But there are, are many Russian, ethnic Russians in Ukraine. They have a huge naval base there. Uh, the uh, Crimean port is Russia's only warm water port, so it's their access for trade with the rest of the world. And there are like tons of natural gas pipelines that supply not only Ukraine, but also Europe. Uh, so no matter which government is in power in Ukraine, and no matter what trade deals they might strike with the EU, the US, or anywhere else in the world, Russia would have the upper hand in their dealings with Ukraine. It is impossible for Ukraine to completely break away from Russia for the foreseeable future. If Russia's leaders were smart and sophisticated, they would have realized that. And they could have played their hand a lot more subtly in this situation and they'd be better off for it. But Vladimir Putin is not subtle and sophisticated. He's as blunt as kindergarten scissors. He's a thug, a gangster, and he thinks like that. So we have the absolute clownish spectacle of Putin denying that there were Russian troops in Crimea as thousands of them poured in. Uh. Putin thinks he can bully his way around the world and with no consequences. After all, when he invaded Georgia, there was no response. Uh, Bush was not smart enough to figure out one, and at that time he had no influence anywhere else in the world. He was a laughing stock. So it was impossible for him to rally, rally anybody to his side. Obama is much smarter, and he has much better relationships with our allies. Uh, if you notice, the first person that Angela Merkel called after she spoke with Putin was Obama. So, Russia thinks that they can do what they want with impunity. But there's a price to pay, and Russia will pay it. Nobody's talking about Japan and China, but these are two countries that also have territorial disputes with Russia. And let me tell you, they're looking at uh, how Russia's behaving, and they don't like it. So they'll be really uh, interested in making sure Russia pays a price for its current aggression. They'll go along with any sanctions that anybody else wants. And China will use fear of Russia to increase its influence in Asia and might actually uh, improve its relationships with us. Interestingly, uh, an industry that will benefit from what's going on now with Russia is the fracking industry, because Europe has looked askance on fracking. They don't want fracking to happen anywhere. But now they realize that they're hamstrung by their dependence on Russia's natural gas. And so, in the next few years, you're going to see, all of a sudden, a lot of European land opened up for fracking. They'll also work on developing other sources of energy, something that the whole world needs to do. As a result, that's going to have a long-term impact on Russia's economy. Russia may, if, it, if, if diplomatic efforts don't succeed with Russia, then they will lose their positions in the G8, in the G20, and I think there's a G12, and they'll all become like the, the G7, the G11, and the G19. Now, in the short run, that doesn't make much difference. In the long run, it's going to complicate Russia's ability to negotiate trade pacts 
around the world. And that will have uh, a long-term destabilizing effect on the Russian economy. The Russian economy is already suffering on account of this uh, crisis in Ukraine. The ruble, or is it the ruble? Whatever. It's lost half its value. Russia may, in the short run, succeed in even annexing Crimea, but in the long term, whatever benefit they get from that will be outweighed by what they will lose on the back end. In the short run, Russia looks like a winner. In the long run, Putin's lack of sophistication and smarts will isolate Russia from the world. And this will have a long-term effect, as, as I said, on their economy. Ten years from now, Russia will be back where they were when the Soviet Union fell apart. Thanks for listening.